Hello. Good morning or some such. Ooh, camera's all over. I've got some stuff to do today. Whoop. Whoop. So uh, I got a little bit of a delayed start this morning because I slept in, which is which is fun. So you get to watch me uh, set up all my social posts and and these things. Ooh, my channel has a pinned message from yesterday. That's cool. All right. Oops. So hi everyone. For those just watching now on YouTube, uh, I'm Josh Goldberg. I'm a full-time independent open source maintainer. That means instead of having a real job at a real company, <laughs> I, uh, I I work on shared open source projects. And hey, Chrissy, good to see you. How's it going? How are you doing? Um, because I'm getting kind of a slow start today, I'm I'm gonna start off by just reviewing, like proofreading my own work, the TypeScript ESLint governance proposal or, or project governance V1. It is um, something a long time in the making. I'm gonna post the link in the chat here, pinned. Um, so project governance, what is this? Why do we care? Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, for reference, TypeScript ESLint, TypeScript ESLint.io is the tooling that enables common JS tools such as ESLint and Prettier to support TypeScript. I did not create it myself, but I am now one of the maintainers of it. It is my favorite open source project that I work on actively, and it's the most flashy, big, important thing that I do. The project historically has had typically one to two maintainers at any given point in time until last year when we started getting more maintainers, such as myself. Um, other people being able to join more frequently and having new folks has meant that we have a little bit bigger of a maintenance team. Oh yeah, proofreading. Now is your time to shine. Uh, so I'm I'm the only independent full-time person. So I've, I've been spending a lot of work on doing like project documentation and paperworky kind of stuff like this. And I wanna formalize at least the documentation for how we run the project. Things like how we determine who gets paid or who is a maintainer versus a committer versus just a regular contributor on the community side. So this big old document is something that I've been working on for a few months now, actually. It takes a surprising amount of effort to get these things right. The document uh, is something we kind of reviewed privately in April. In May, I started sharing it out with a select few open source maintainers, really just whoever I happened to randomly talk about anything vaguely similar recently. Um, and then mid-June, so yesterday, Wednesday, I posted it on um, GitHub and shared the link on social media. Already I'm seeing a typo, which is posted on Discord's plural. So let me, let me edit that. Discord's, should be Discord, right. Um, and this is true. Also, we intend on following this up later this year with updates to reflect improvements we want to make. Uh, we'll also work on this continuously over time as the project grows and we learn more about governance. Uh, great. So yeah, uh, there are a few reasons why one would do a governance document like this. Uh, I'm just reading through the document now myself. Um, we want to make it clear how and why we do the things we do, especially around compensation and expectations around goals. Uh, we've had a couple of people ask, hey, can I join on as a maintainer? What are the expectations? And our answer has been, do, do, do things? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, so um, it's good to make this clear. Second, we want community input. Like open source is, it's an open thing. It's supposed to be that the community has a say and understands what's going on, not just some secret cabal of shenanigans on the back end. So we wanna make sure people know what we're doing, why we're doing it, and can suggest changes or improvements as, as things comes up. Um, things come up, pardon me. Uh, lastly, uh, we, we do wanna make it clear how we evolve this over time, because this will evolve over time. There's no such thing as a project governance document that 
stays static and should. Uh, as the project changes, uh, darn, you can't proofread with me. Well, we can we can read it together at least. Um, as the project changes, we we want to make sure that updates are visible and clear. So, um, for anyone out there, just read it over. You know, if you have time, no worries. If not, and let us know if there are any changes you think we should make. That would make me happy. Uh, so tentatively, we're uh, going to go with the July 14th deadline, one month from when we posted yesterday for the public discussion. Then after that, I'm going to put this into the Type UPS Slint maintenance docs, which fun fact exists. We have a whole explainer section on our docs for how we maintain, starting with the branding, very important. Got little PNG and SVG downloads, but then also probably more importantly, like what we do when we see an issue and uh specifically for different types honestly there's a lot more verbiage word stuff here than than our, i think our behavior in, would indicate like a lot of it's pretty straightforward like if we see an issue and we can't reproduce it we tell the person hey we can't repro okay uh vague steps around like versioning and deprecations etc all right uh so let me actually just uh, post on social that this is what I'm doing. So first thing today is viewing our the TCS like object governance doc proposal doc and do, do, do. I started using Elk as my Mastodon client instead of uh, the native one. It's been nice, a little closer to the Twitter feel. Anyway, so here's here's right now. By the way, I should note the the proposal doesn't change anything major. Uh, hyperlink the park where I mentioned the Discord. Um, sure, that's a good idea. Yeah, I got the link here, but not uh, later. Um, I don't have, we don't have a blue sky yet for, um, for the project. Good call though on linking things. So I'm going to link on Twitter and the foster dom and do that. That's good. See, this is why we, uh, we do things in the open because folks have good ideas. All right, cool. So there we go. Discord, masked on Twitter. Um, anyway, thank you for the suggestion. Contribution tiers. Um, this is an example of, we're not actually changing all that much. This is just kind of a formalization, maybe a slight improvement of visibility to how things are now. These are kind of the four types of contribution tiers as I consider them. Uh, just anyone who does anything. So one point at an anything um, where we'll, uh, we cover what the points are later, is a contributor. And as a subset of that, people who have at least one point in specifically pull requests um, are code contributors. Um, we don't require anything beyond that just for us to consider them. Like these, this role comes with nothing. It's just, oh, cool, you did the thing before. So I guess nothing other than pride and joy and glory. But anyway, people who like actually like regularly done stuff for the project, there are a couple tiers there. First is committer, someone who's commit access. In order to become a committer, we expect that you've done at least five points in issues, five points in pull requests, um, 15 points total. I should probably go over the points first. I'll do that. So what are those points? Um, I believe that it is impossible to accurately estimate software projects, but I also believe it can be useful to try sometimes. So unfortunately, this is the best system idea we've got. Please someone consider or propose a better one if you know of it. But if you do any small typo or single file bug fix or reporting them, um, that would be like a one pointer, anything straightforward, like two, three files, like a bug fix in a lint rule or something like that would be two, something large, like a real multi file shenanigan would be three points. And then anything really large would be a five pointer. Ooh, interesting uh, suggestion. Um, maybe contributor could be non-code. It'll help folks when you're open source and coding in general feel confident. 
So that's an interesting idea. My instinct is to say it might have the opposite effect, that if you explicitly say non-code contributor, it'll make people feel like they're lesser or like their contributions are lesser. Allison, good to see you again. How's it going? Thanks for thanks for hopping back on. Um, we're just going over the the pins discussion project governance proposal. Um, like part of my goal here with calling a contributor all up um, is that I I want everyone to feel like they're oh interesting hmm. everyone to feel like they're a contributor. Um, now I'm wondering. Yeah, now I'm wondering. But yeah, I'll think about that because maybe it's good to have non-code contributor as like a emphasize like you did a great thing. I don't know. Because you can already tell who is a code contributor versus non-code because non-code won't have this role. Yeah. Well, let me think about that. Thanks for the suggestion. Um, so yeah, so five points and issues. So like five small issues, a couple big ones. Um, 15 points total. Um, and then we expect that you've done at least 10 points a month for at least two of the four most recent months as of whenever you're trying to get to the committer role. Um, I'll also note though that these, these are like minimum requirements, give or take, like if you do a couple of large things and you're almost at the threshold, it's fine. Like this is, this is not like a hard and fast rule. Also, it's also not a hard and fast rule in the other way. Like if you do like 15 points of like small bug fixes that that we would want to see something larger in order to be a uh, like a, a recognized committer with commit access. But once someone does get to a committer role, they get one share, so like one units divided equally amongst all units of, of the monthly reimbursement. Um, a maintainer is like a committer, but uh, roughly twice as much for the expectations, like 10, 10, 30 instead of 5, 5, 15. So the goal here is that um, maintainers are committers who've just done a bunch more. And then they get double share. Yeah. Uh, cool. So I'll also note that this proposal right now, per our reality today, does not really reflect the totality of all the things that people might contribute, like Discord threads, uh, working on upstream dependencies for tasks that are important to us and we talk about on our repo. Those are all really good and important, but we they're not captured here. Which brings me to the first of the likely follow-ups. Uh, there are a bunch of points we're probably gonna do very soon after this proposal goes in. One of those is adding in things like helping users via blogs, Discord, other social media platforms. Um, that's something that we like to see, but isn't right now captured in the proposal or like in our behavior. So that's something we'll have to discuss like how to do right as a follow-up. Um, and then, yeah, so if someone seems to qualify for a next tier, uh, we'll set up a private discussion and, and poll internally um, just to, you know, help, help, help get in there. All right, so what are the expectations? We've gone over what, what points are and the expectations to get to these roles, but when you're doing the roles, what do you what are you expecting? So uh, we don't have any actual expectations of people. Like if you have to take a month or three off, that's fine. But there are some tasks that we need people to do. Um, one of those is issue triage. Um, so anyone, anyone who is a committer maintainer, if it's a straightforward issue, they can approve it. Market is accepting pull requests so like docs enhancements, bug fixes, new features. If it's non-straightforward, where I believe earlier we I defined straightforward as like two to three files at most with minimum logical changes. If it's not straightforward, if there's like a lot of, um, I don't know, logical shenanigans or dependency work, then we need a couple of committer approvals or a maintainer. Um, so that these are like, well, oops, issue triage. That's like small to medium, medium to large, and then the really big ones require public discussion. So like significant refactors, real API breakages and changes. This is stuff that like the community should be given the chance to voice out their opinions on. And thank you, Chrissy. Yeah, I don't like when things are implicit, just like, oh yeah, hand wavy, do this. No, I think it, it should be clear like what one does and why one does it. Cool. 
site responding to something off screen. I've been <laughs> you find these stuff how long were you mindlessly browsing twitter I, I i can go for a surprising amount of time but i've been trying to cut back stop myself no i'm good i'm good i traveled last week i'm back back this week so it's, it's good to do code things again um after after i go over this thing i've got a whole bunch of github notifications to get through which i'm pretty pumped highly recommend adding a source that can give me here's an idea how to give effective reviews interesting um, I wouldn't put that in this document, but I do think it's a good idea for our website under the maintenance. So, um, yeah, this is a two, <laughs> one of those, one of those to do's that just lasts forever. But yeah, no, that's definitely on my list. Thank you for, for mentioning Chrissy. Good old bump of the bump of the task. Um, <laughs> nice article. But yeah, I've got a, a to-do um, of like how to fill out the PR flow and, and go over resources. So definitely going to have that. But that, that wouldn't be something I put in this doc, just uh, in our in our like general, general maintenance docs. Oh, wow. 30 to 40 minutes of Twitter. That's some intense Twittering. Oof. Um, but cool. The, the PR reviews flow and the issue review flow are pretty similar, honestly. Anything straightforward can have a single approval. Um, Anything not straightforward, like medium large or yeah, medium sized, uh, two committers or one maintainer, um, like internal refactors and public API. Uh, you know, I'm going to say actually it should be public API changes and non breaking public API changes. Uh, there we go. Not breaking. And then unusual require, again, uh, two maintainer approvals because we really want to make sure that um, these are, you know, these are okay with the team. <laughs> it's funny because I've spent like, you know, multiple hours just like browsing TikTok and uh, <laughs> Twitter and all this. So I'm sorry if that came across as judgment. It was just, uh, hmm. I don't know. I don't know the, I don't know the word for what I'm going for, but you're not alone. You're definitely not alone. It's brutal. Like I've heard people talk about the accessibility aspect of just how that, the infinite scroll, like, tr tr like, you know, dopamine tricks our brain. Also, hello. First time chat. B I N I T K M E. How do I say that? New to types of PS Lint. Uh, totally reasonable to ask the question of, is it required to lint TypeScript? Um, ESLint does, Vinit, hello. Uh, thank you. ESLint does not lint TypeScript by default. Um, ESLint only understands native JavaScript syntax. So the new things in TypeScript, like type annotations, interfaces, those are not, uh, those are not understood by ESLint. So if you go to like the ESLint.org playground and try to do like interface, hello, unexpected token, misspelled hello. So that's why TypeScript ESLint comes into play. We are a parser that you can use with ESLint. ESLint supports custom parsers for parsing code differently. And our parser understands TypeScript syntax. In addition, we also provide a whole bunch of really nice rules, uh, things specific to TypeScript on top of the ESLint rule set. So if you wanna get started with us, definitely recommend going to the docs, the getting started page. Um, and it'll get you set up with like the quickest config you can use to lint your types of code. We recommend extending the ESLint recommend rules and ours. And then we also have a more fancy, powerful set of rules that you can enable with Project True. Ooh, migrating from Create React app to VP test and TypeScript. That's awesome. Yay. Yeah, let us, let me know. Let us know how it goes. Hope it, hope it works out well. Cool. So yeah, moving on for the project governance proposal. Um, now that we've discussed uh, w what people are allowed to do, 
Um, or like what are the expectations of the team to, to get around to doing? Monthly reimbursements. Uh, team members are, are paid. Uh, this is important to me because I don't have a job and the majority of my open source income comes from this project. But also I think it's important that uh, if you're if you're spending your time working on something, especially if that something has brought people themselves value, then you should be reimbursed. So team members will be reimbursed the minimum of their activity level and tier. Each month, uh, the the committers and maintainers who hit their expectation receive their full shares. So to recap, that's one share committer, two share maintainer a month. Uh, then, where is it? Cool. Uh, people who hit half their expectations receive half shares. So uh, if if folks if folks aren't doing anything, they're paid. But if they are doing like half, give or take, roughly, then they do still get half paid. Um, does it already have support for language LSP for real-time linting? Uh, it's supposed to plug in for ESLint, so ESLint lints TypeScript code as you type. That's correct, yes. I'll just uh, go to a file in my editor. So I just have an arbitrary project that, that's a TypeScript project open, like s 4 whack equals true, and you can see the little, little squigglies, quick fix, prefer const. So export const whack boolean array equals this. If I switch to the style we don't recommend, this is a, oops, a this is a TypeScript specific rule. You can see it's TypeScript ESLint. Boop. So yep, yeah, it's a set of extensions on ESLint. So everything ESLint can do, we can do better. That's a kind of a hostile statement. Please don't quote me on that one. But yeah, um, yeah, glad to hear, Chrissy. That's the goal. I mean, this isn't improving DEI diversity, equity, inclusion in open source is not a direct goal of this project governance proposal specifically, but it is one of the things I care about and wants to help improve. And I think this is like a first step towards working on that. And my pleasure in it. Any other, any other questions you have, send them my way. Um, cool. So um, I also want to note that community reimbursements. Yay. Um, so sometimes we get a random community member who does a really good set of work and we will we will want to pay them as well. This is actually something that I picked up on from the ESLint project. They're not the only ones who do this, but they do it well. They've they've offered to pay me occasionally when I've sent non-trivial pull requests their way, um, and many other people, not just me. So if you do an unusually sized uh, amount of work in a month, like more than five points, um, oh, I should note five five small things like five typo fixes is, is not a reimbursement make. So I should, I should say five points and at least one large, I'm going to say one large I pull request, one large item because yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, yeah. Uh, so we'll, we may be privately nominating people. So again, this is not a hard and fast rule. This is roughly give or take, and then we'll talk about it internally. Um, and don't need significant assistance. Yeah, so like if you submit something really big and we have to exhaustively work with you, then that took up a lot of our time to help. But uh, if you're like starting to do powerful things your own, we want to reimburse you for that work. This document should include, ooh, I like this. Examples of merged PRs in all categories. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Plus one. So ending additions do. Thanks. Chrissy codes. Add um, examples of, of issues and PRs in the various categories. I like that. That's a really good idea. That would help people understand what the heck we're talking about. So adding it to the list of things to, to do. Cool. Um, keep them coming. Good ideas. So yeah, if someone does like a large amount of work, we want to pay them. Anyway, last bit of process uh, here, a note, so that we will change this over time. I mentioned much earlier on that that is inevitable. 
Um, if we do want to make any changes, we'll post it for open discussions and kept open for at least one month. Uh, we'll share it out at the beginning, middle, and end of that month on Discord and all of our social media accounts. So same as this thing. I do plan on rebumping this up in a couple of weeks. Got to get visibility. Yes, I will hyperlink your name, of course. Um, I mean, I forget who, who introduced me to this concept first, but there is openness in that you are available for people to understand the thing. And then there's openness in that you are going out of your way to make sure that people see it. Like there's a difference between the two. The example I remember is working at a company, a team can make all of its documentation open so other teams can read it. But if they don't do brown bags slash presentations and pairing with other teams, teams members it's it can be hard for anyone to understand even if it is open and hey kevin how's it going thanks for coming in hi uh, i'm just going to go oh no the oh, i forgot to keep the post pinned for more than 20 minutes pin it for another 20. Uh, i'm just going over the project governance stock for type gps uh uh, but yeah, so we got, we went over the things in the doc, the context for why we want this, asking people to look at it, what contribution tiers there are and rough pointing. Uh, and then like what, oh yeah, what people are expected to be able to do, like the power that comes with maintenance tiers and reimbursements. What's going to happen next? You finished my book? Yay! I hope you, I hope you liked it. Sorry for the typos. Did it go well? Um, it's... There's still a lot of stuff that we want to do here that is just not captured in the doc that we'll leave. You know, this is a V1. We'll iterate on it. For starters, it would be really nice to automate a lot of this stuff. Uh, I've been very careful to try to say that everything is rough, give or take, because humans are humans, everything is different. But I would like to at least be able to detect contributions automatically when possible and make a starting list just to make it easier to review what people have been up to. Uh, it will always need manual oversight, always, uh, and review. Um, oh yeah, good idea. I really these things. Um, I, I, I mentioned earlier in the stream, we'll eventually add explicit, we may eventually add explicit metrics for like helping users with blogs and discords. We have, uh, by the way, in our discord, which I'm so paranoid. I'm terrified. I've never showed my Discord intentionally on stream, but I want to show off. We have a help thread, or like a help forum in the TypeScript PS link community Discord. All right, make sure none of my shenanigans are visible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, we have a help thingy. Um, so, uh, the Discord is linked in the website footer, if you're curious. Uh, yay. So, yeah, helping people here. That's a maintenance task c contribution. Oh, and dependency sponsorships. Um, we are a dependency of ESLint. Like, one of, one of our top sponsors, actually, is the ESLint project all up. They give us money, as do a bunch of other lovely sponsors who I am very grateful towards. Uh, so maybe we should do that. TBD, T B U D. Ooh, girl script summer of code. Sweet. G S S O C as opposed to G S O C Google summer of code. Awesome, thanks. Let me. Uh, oh yeah. So longer term, um, we'd love to have some kind of like apprenticeship, fellowship, internship, whatever you want to call it, program. Set aside money and time to help folks. Um, that will come later. It's not a likely soon, but it is something we want to work on. So yeah, let me uh, link these to Google Summer of Code. I think only having two examples here is fine. So Google Summer of Code or Outreachy. We don't need like an exhaustive list of all the possible programs. Oh yeah, uh, it is kind of halfway through the year, isn't it? Um, responded to Allison. Yeah, I'm down. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, Google sees in a docs. I forgot about them. Yeah, yeah, they're really good. Um, yeah, I'd be down to go over my 2023 plans. I'll do it at the end of the stream today though, because I do want to get through, um, 
my get up notifications and I spent about half hour already of this. Um, so if, if you're still here at the end of my stream, then yes. Otherwise, I, I can do it on a, on, a, on a future one. Word, yeah. I kind of need to review that document and see what I have or haven't gotten to yet. Good call. I should do that. It's the halfway point of the year. I should, you know, should, should, should look at things. But all right. And by the way, some stuff that we're not doing, uh, we're not making any time requirements to stay as a committer or maintainer. It's totally fine to take six months off. One of our maintainers does that often. Our mono too. Our mono too does amazing work. So I wouldn't want to penalize them for like having a life, you know, uh, or having a life outside of type of BS lids that is prioritized over us to the point where we are not, you know, being worked on actively at all times, whatever. I have a life for myself and I still do this. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say anything mean. Anyway, um, technical steering committees like ESLint has subgroups for like the website and different things, but uh, we, we're, we're still small and relatively, relatively small. We don't need that, I don't think. Um, and then same with working groups. Anyway, um, Chrissy, let me add your name. You've, you've added some good suggestions there's no h's there fudge what is your what is your twitter why am i codes chrissy there it is do you do you have a different name you'd like to be uh linked under here Oop. Um, also cool other set of reference docs for if, you're, if anyone's curious other places that have maintenance or governance descriptions online uh, and yeah I want to add issues yeah I'll do I'll, this will take a little while so I'll do it off stream but thank you uh, changes to the documents that will do that we'll get to soon. All right, cool. So, oh, Dark Genie 1987, subscribe to the Prime. Thank you very much. I appreciate you doing that. Uh, that that makes it easier for me to keep doing this. So I, I like that. Much appreciated. Like and subscribe. All right. Cool, yeah, DM me. So that's the governance document. That's all for that. Now I'd like to get back to my other stuff. Yay, I've got some PRs to review. So first up, let's go to my template type hit node package. Uh, oh boy. Um, yeah, I'll go over a couple of here. Sorry, I'm just, I'm having a slow start today and I haven't like pre gone through and seen which things are stuff we could go over on stream. Yeah. So type of type of node package. Boop. So let's, let's go over, let's talk about what this is and switch gears a bit. <laughs> Of nothing, nothing quite like free money, right? Switching gears, but thank you. Thank you nonetheless. And I'm glad you've enjoyed the streams. Uh, switching gears going over uh, PR from Navin Morthy. Ugh, Twitter search. There we go. Boop. My template, yes. TS package. And here we go. All right. So, uh, template TypeScript node package pinned. What is happening here? Code template. So, um, there is, I went over this in the last stream, so I'm not going to go over it too exhaustively. There is an existing plugin, ESN plugin N. 
and is short for node. That's a good set of lint rules uh, for a node. So a bunch of ESLint rules you can add to your project that are specific to the node use case. Um, Navin is adding this as specified in an issue I'd filed to my template type of node package, which is a, as one might guess, a template package you can use just to set up a new TypeScript repo. Um, unfortunately, this exposes that uh, I had misconfigured ESLint, which is embarrassing and ironic given what I do. Um, apparently, ESLintRC.cjs is getting some uh, lint failures. npm lint. And it looks like I've misconfigured the ESLint stuff to, um, let's see, where is it? Yeah, so ESLintRC to CGS, it's a dot file, meaning it starts with a dot. Stack Overflow is down. Oh no, hi type your tea time. Oh boy. Routine maintenance, okay. Why is there a pin tweet from 2022? They haven't tweeted since 2022? Silly, okay. Slack stackstatus.net. Hmm. Look at this loading time, I wonder if one of the classic mistakes companies do at the infra level is to put their downtime or status indicator on the same infrastructure as the rest of the site. So that if one goes down, the other goes too. I don't know if that's what's happening here, but uh, smells like it. Anyway, let's get that other stuff out of here. Well, funny. Oh my God, where is, oh, did I just minimize the wrong window? God dang it, hate this. All right. There it is. Whoopsies. All right, so yeah, um, I misconfigured ESLint to not run on the ESLint config file, ironically. So now if you run ESLint in the terminal uh, on this PR, or just, I guess, in other PRs that change it, ESLint will give complaints. That's not good. So pull PKMI, PKMLint. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and fix the issue. Uh, that's really funny. I'll go ahead and fix or so I filed a, um, a separate issue for this that I guess I'm just going to have to work on now. I meant to minimize that window and this window. There we go. Uh, so then merge the changes into this PRs. Ooh, Insights PR twelve sixty eight. Oh, from Takanomi, one of my one of my favorites on this stream. Cool. Yeah, I'll take a look. Thank you for the the PR link, Chrissy. Um, all right. Um, so yeah, what what is happening here? Five twenty eight. No, it's five thirty seven. Yeah. So this is. I'm just gonna fix this. Uh gonna have to file a PR for this issue. It's blocking builds, lol. Posted on the socials. So all dot files should be linted by running tmpm or lint, but dot es under c dot cjs isn't. It's pointed out by Navin. Okay. Uh, to ignore. So Navin mentioned you can add not star stars. Yeah, so what's confusing to me is that I already have a don't ignore dot files in my ESLint ignore, and yet pmpm lint on the command line is still uh, var lat equals true. Like, it's still not getting it. What's confusing to me is that ESLint plugin perfectionist, which is the plugin we're using um, for complaints, isn't getting picked up. Like, like all my like I getting ESLint complaints for um, no unused variables. 
apparently two of them, two of those rules, that's a whole other issue, can of worms, but, like, there are no other complaints here. And then when I run on the command line, nothing, but if I do pm, uh, mpx, eslint.esmrc.cjs directly, I do get the, the lint complaints. And what's more is that I don't get complaints from the perfectionist plugin, which is what enforces. Oh no, it already, it, it auto fixed. All right, I'll get this in hard head. Okay, so if I do, okay, so I do get complaints from the perfectionist plugin when I run mpx eslint on the file. So in a different node app, ignore patterns. Oh, I really don't want to have to. Captain Wolfred, thank you for subscribing. Three month streak, woo. I really appreciate it. Cheers. Uh, yay. Hmm. How are you, by the way? How's it going? Um, so I don't, I, I don't like this. I don't like how ESLint just natively isn't um, I don't know, isn't linting the dot files. Oh no, did I put a cat? <sighs> what did I do? I, I had done it. Talk shows, how did this get reset? Software, thank you for posting. Ugh. I don't remember when that got changed and I don't know why. What, is, what, are, what do these mean? But no, thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> Adjective Allison, you're on uh, Emoji explosion dev. I am kind of a talk show. I've been watching a lot of Conan O'Brien recently. One of my idols. What a lovely, lovely boy that man is. All right. Um, oh, fun fact. Experimental utils got renamed to just utils. <sighs> I don't want to have to put an explicit entry in the ESLint file. But let me just try it out. Does that work? Uh, ignore patterns, mpx, eslint dot. Wait, I need to save without formatting all so that I can actually get the complaints. Yeah, mpx, eslint dot. So running eslint doesn't, uh, doesn't capture, doesn't capture dot files. I wonder, is there like a, um, there's no, there's no, I don't know. So here's the thing. A dot file is a weird thing to use. Like something that starts with a dot. And ESLint actually is moving to a new um, a new config format. So ESLint config. So I've been procrastinating um, going to the new ESLint config files format because it's still kind of new. Um, oh, link which page? The one I just linked after you asked or a different one. Um, also, I forgot to link the issue. Yay. I'm gonna pin that. There we go. Cool. Yeah, so there's a new ESLint config file called the flat config format, which honestly, it's a much better format. I've just been dragging my feet because ESLint 9 is when they're gonna start making it like the default recommended thing. Now it's still kind of early. But this is so annoying to me that it's a dot file which isn't getting linted, except it is in the editor, but not in the command, whatever. So I'm just gonna try out eslint.config. Dot JS. Let's see how it goes. So export default. Don't need. Don't need env. So let's let's see what's different. Uh, I don't know how to do this type. To do how to add a type. So this, fun fact, this little at type JSTOC annotation tells TypeScript in your editor what this is supposed to be. Um, so, okay. So the way that it works now is uh, you export an array 
which is an array of settings. Um, and actually, it's basically the existing ESLint overrides option. Previously in ESLint, you define an output object that had like your list of rules and any plugin and stuff, and then you could also override for specific files. Now, basically, it's all the overrides. Um, where you have your base object and then you can put in also the overrides. They're all the same format. So uh, that's nice. There's also a difference in that instead of referring to things by name, like string name, like ESLint recommended, um, you, actually I think ESLint recommended might be a string, but instead of like your plugins being referred to by name, you import normally. Uh, so, where is the import? There we go. So you do like import perfectionist from ESLint plugin perfectionist. Uh, that's the parser. Come on. Global variables, play rules. Here we go. ESLint plugin JS doc, which actually is one that I use. So import JS doc. So instead of, oh, it's no longer an array. It's a, uh, and instead of extends, it's an object, JS doc. And perfectionist, perfectionist dots configs recommended natural. Let's just try with the one for now. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment out a whole bunch of stuff because I, I just want to see like, is there a, do they reference the TypeScript? They don't re reference TypeScript. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to see if the JS doc plugin works or like, you know, before I even try out the plugins, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just like try out some rules, some basic rules. So um, turning off all, yeah, I'm just going to turn off all the rules. Don't need this root true. And then like, what's an example of an ESL? Like no constant condition error. And then yes, so like, if true console log hi ambulance unexpected key parser turn that off hi uh <laughs> npx eslint eslint.config.js yay so at the very least <laughs> very least it works so that's nice. Um, let's let's see. So uh, we got the JS doc plugin. Does that work? Uh, unexpected key plugin oh, plugins plural. Um, let's ESM plugin JS doc. Do we have like examples of rule complaints? Uh, check access. What does that do? Access foo. Okay. Let's look at that. On a, uh, nope. It's not complaining. Recommended. Well. JS doc. Plugins JS doc. Is there a extends? Oh, using aha uh -huh. JS doc dot configs dot recommended. Here we go. Okay, okay. Oh, so it's it's not even that I'm doing the plugins thing. It's that I want um, JS doc dot configs dot recommended. Expected an object. Well, I'm doing the thing. 
with JSDoc. JSDoc.config is not recommended. Hi, JSDoc.config is not recommended. What's happening here? All right. Plugins key zero. Yeah. <sighs> Am I on the latest version of the plugin? Renovate this two weeks ago, 46.42. That's basically pretty close. Just in case. PFC slint, eslint.config.js. Key plugins, key zero, expected an object, but it is an object. Wait, jsdoc.config is not recommended. Yeah. Which is, did I typo this? jsdoc.config. What? All right. Going to the actual complaints, it is key value gives value key. So let's see what it complains about. Gives JS doc. Key is zero, value is JS doc. Why are we looking at this? What is happening? If I comment this out, is it okay? Yeah, it's fine. JSDoc.config is not recommended. Do I still need to include plugins JSDoc? Nope. Is this, uh, I, I'm confused at this point. It is an experimental, like, not experimental, it is an upcoming, like, still early version. So, um, JSDoc. Type error. So at this point, I, I I would just chalk this up to being new and early, and I'm not one of the people like actually intentionally trying it out. So to heck with it, I'm gonna give up. 20 minutes or whatever, 15 minutes of effort at most, and I am giving up. So yeah, get it all, get reset. Our head, my clear. Yeah. So this this new config is interesting and cool, and I'm excited about it, but I'm not gonna work on it now. Uh, instead, I'll go back to the original task, which was getting this file to be linted. Um, and dot star. Dot star. Js. Okay. So if I just. If I just change the, <laughs> if I just change my lint command to do dot and dot star js, oh wait, uh, bash shell include dot files. Oh my god, <laughs> I forgot they're offline for maintenance. Oh boy, uh, I thought they were back. Who said they were back? Someone said that. Type good tea time. You lied to me. How dare you? So echo dot cat dot. How do I force an expand? My God, you don't realize how much you rely on these things. You said that the that the Stack Exchange sites were back up. <laughs> you don't realize how much you rely on on those sites until they're down. So yeah, uh, instead of ESLN dot, I'm now doing ESLN dot star JS because, uh, uh, oh, so if I do PM PM run lint. Okay, so the routine maintenance was done and then they, then they last moment realized they need more routine maintenance. Ah, okay. For a split second, great. All right, so yeah, this is, this is amusing. I'm amused, but great. All right, so I ran the linter in fix mode and it, so ESM plugin perfectionist, great little plugin. Um, 
It, uh, I use it to alphabetize objects. One should only ever enforce arbitrary things like alphabetization if there is an auto fixer, otherwise it's a total pain in the butt. So, um, one thing that the plugin is doing that I don't like is it is, um, it's asking for sorting in the rules objects, even though I've demarcated areas with comments. Like there's, I, there's an intentional order for these things. I do not like that it is mucking around with that order. So like these changes, this is fine. Um, I'm gonna stage these. Neurotrace, strong agree. There is, I think, an objectively better way to do things, which is sorting imports, but that objective better is so mild compared to the annoyance and pain of having to do it auto, uh, manually. Oops, I meant to stage, not revert. Uh, like, it's just such a pain to do these things manually. Like, really, use, like, ESLint Plugin Perfectionist or ESLint Plugin Simple Import Sorts. I'll uh, post links here. And, like, that's the only right way to do it. Here we go. Um, perfectionist. Perfectionist is newer but more comprehensive. Simple Import Sort is, like, very... Good. It's battle tested, as they say. So yeah, I think that this is an annoyance um, that I want these comments to indicate that they shouldn't be sorted. So I'm gonna file a bug or a feature request, not sure, on ESLint plugin perfectionist about this. That um, sample.js like export. Uh, whatever, like, this should come first, ABC, or EF, this should come second, ABC, true. Uh, and I, I don't know, I feel like this is probably a, uh, probably a rule change like it's not a bug like arguably I I'm kind of wrong in, in wanting what I want but uh yeah so maybe it's like a feature request for the plugin and just checking they have a really nice website by the way look at this freaking thing um I want to say sorts props sort objects here we go um Enforce assorted objects. Does it have options? In our case, always on top. Okay, so yeah, it's a configurable rule. You can configure whether it's sorted alphabetically, naturally, or, and this one cracks me up and I would never use it personally, line length, oh God. Um, you can do ascending or descending, ignore case. Uh, but I want to be able to feature um, allow, um, sort, allow sorting within commented areas. So I think sort object, um, I checked the options in this page and didn't see anything, anything that looked related to this request. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are properties that I would intentionally want to sort uh, within specific delineated areas. Not, for example, in, ah, stack exchange is back, yay. Cool. Ooh, bash has a dot glob option. That's actually what I was looking for previously. Oh, but you have to like sh opt it, whatever that is. I'm guessing that's setting options for your shell. Dot glob option. Yeah, that's go away. Right. Um, so for example, what was it? Um, here we go. For example, 
it was noted that I personally, uh, that I intentionally um, mm -hmm. use comments to indicate uh, areas of uh, rules in my ESLint configs. So, like, let's let's call this markdown file and then like the first these rules are intentionally enabled awesome rule error second these on by default rules are intentionally disabled. whatever just showing off like not so awesome rule there you go just showing an example I wouldn't want to, but ESLint plugin perfectionist, or I guess perfectionist sorts objects is sorting them to, oh, I, I should make these alphabetically off. Very awesome rule, not as awesome rule. All right, so you probably professional sorting off is sorting them alphabetically as my lint config um, asked it to. It'd be nice to uh, have an option I can enable to uh, sort within commented areas. It feels like something that shouldn't be on by default, I think. I think I don't want it in specific files areas, such as an ESLint config. And then I did have like a really quick sample, but I guess, I guess I can just put the code sample here, LOL. Yes. All right, read the docs and I did, check that there isn't already an issue because there are no open issues. <laughs> Submitted. Great. So now that, uh, now that that's, now that that's done, um, I'm going to I'm gonna review the changes here. Yeah. So like the order in these rules actually is important because, uh, well, actually, I guess it's not important. Never mind. Never mind. Um, let's see. Actually, I could probably work with this. Uh, oh yeah, no, like the, it's it's mucking up my commented areas. So, yeah, yeah. Don't don't want these changes. So I'm gonna revert. But then it'll probably auto fix, won't it? There we go. Uh, so this is a fine change to have. But yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off uh, sort objects for this uh, reason for just that area and then uh, enable it. Unfortunately, that being said, however, however, I really hate doing this in a file because um, it's, I don't like having random comments floating around. So what I'm gonna do is add an override for um, oops, revert, revert this change. Yeah, I'm gonna add an override. God dang it, I thought I reverted these ranges. Yeah, uh, for specifically this reason. So for the, for, Files. No, I don't. 
I really hate having a comment for this in the file, you know? Really, really hate it. But I don't know of a way around it. This is the problem with like sorting rules in ESLint. Like, styling is nice, but then there's always that one little thing. So yeah, actually, I'm not sure. Feels maybe this would be reasonable to turn on by default. And actually, um, more also keep in this area. Ah. After auto fixing, the above that config gets turned into. So just, just to make the make it more clear. Using comments to indicate specific using slash slash non JS doc and hate specific areas is kind of a reasonable is a reasonable practice. Not sure. <sighs> yeah, I'll just turn the rule off uh, for the file. And, oop, yeah, just uh, enable it at the end. What's this complaining about here? Duplication, duplication, duplicate key. Ah, there we go. All right, so now I've got this. I really don't like having this here though. I really, ugh. It's so gross to me to have this disabled. So I'm gonna put on top the override. So at least it's a little less clear and obvious where it is or that it is in existence. And by the way, the reason why I'm putting an enable after is that I have a lint rule that says if you disable a rule you for a block, you should re-enable it after just so you're not accidentally enabling it for, or disabling it for the rest of the file. All right, so did check out the lint.files. Get add all, get commit and fix, lint, fix lint, c.cjs. This is coding for you. One little thing. Oh yeah, just lint one more file. It turns into this whole investigation with an issue filed and a downstream blah, 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 blah. Such is life. Filed as part of this. There we go. Uh, where is the bug? Here we go. Uh, changes the and run lint command to explicitly include dot files. Once the new, I don't like doing this, doing, uh, making the command more complex, but I couldn't figure out a way to get it to include dot files, including, but this including Trying. Actually, yeah, let me just double check, make sure that I'm not being rude to not being <laughs> and just ignoring the suggestion here. So, uh, ignore patterns. Oh, yeah, but this would lint all the dot files. Okay, yeah, I don't want that. So, uh, fortunately, once uh, ESLint flat config, uh, Yes, lint flat config is stable, is is usable. Um, we can switch to that and remove this and remove the change to the lint script. All right, all righty. What a silly, silly pull request. Truly silly.
downsides of working in this area. Silly. Very silly. Okie dokie. And now we wait for boats. All right, so just to recap what, what happened here. <laughs> um, oh, sample.js. I added a file I didn't mean to add. Don't want that. So first off, uh, I added dot star JS to builds. Um, and then, oh, God dang it. It did apply some changes to the ESLint RC file that I didn't want. Hey, you can, Chrissy. Uh, no, not yet. Still on the, uh, the queue for after my notifications. Hopefully I'll have time. Um, so just going back to the ESLint JS file. All right, so. Uh, do not want these to change the order around. Annoying. Do I want this? No only tests. Padding line between statements is a uh, stylistic concern that doesn't fit with prettier. Oop, I meant to, I should have enabled this after that object. Okay. And then yeah, no constant condition actually should come after no case declaration. So that's good. Fixing the ordering of things. Let's push and then see what the new changes are. There we go. Yay. Oh, no only test should come after these. Yip, yip, yip. Hit commit and fixing ordering objects. All right. I'm sure that everyone out there in the world is, is enamored with and fascinated by my spending whatever 20, 30 minutes working on sorting the entries in my ESLint config. Really top level engineering stuff right here. Yeah. So this looks good to me. Um, I've disabled the plug and sort objects rule in line. That's the best I can do. The least intrusive way to get around this feature request. Tylo Pilots. Tyler Pilas? How do I say that? Sorry. Also, hi! Thanks for joining. Welcome. How are you doing? Tylo. Tilo? Tylo? Tylo. Hi. <laughs> Great. Right. So this, this PR looks good to me. Just finishing up this one. So once the build's finished. Oh, you know what? The builds will fail because I made a change to this repo that is nice for users and annoying for maintainer maintenance where um, the hydration root file. So uh, when this, when this repo or when you run the hydration command, which is a command that takes an existing repo and plops a bunch of this templates tooling on top of the repo, it overrides a bunch of files such as ESLint-RC.CJS. And that means any change, <laughs> any change, that modifies these files also has to modify um, modify the templating because well the template shouldn't the template should use the stuff that it applies to other repos and hydration so now I'm gonna have to uh, modify the package JSON lint script maybe x eslint dot and dot star js so that's nice. And um, I'm also going to have to modify the ESLint file in the, uh, let's see, oops, in the templating. So let's go down blank line. Oh, okay. So we got these. So I got the ESLint enable at the end. Let's see. No case declaration. No case declarations off. Ah. The template was wrong. It uh, must not verify. That's right. It doesn't verify the ESLint file. There are like some small changes. Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, and then we got we got an order fix. Where is it? Plugin JSON C recommended. Yep. Extends after included. Put the files here because EF alphabetical order. 
Uh, that, that looks good. Excluded files, that goes above extends, alphabetical order. And then one more little comment above the overrides. Get that all, okay. and update hydration files too. All right, so yeah, hydrates test end to end allows the following files to be changed. That includes package JSON and it includes ESLint RC. That's, that's not good. Um, anyway, anyway. I guess now we wait. So what was I doing before this? So um, I was oh yeah reviewing the PR that adds an ESLint plugin N, and that's blocked because this file has, has changes to it uh, and lint complaints. So what it's going to do is get this PR merged to get eslintrc.cjs, excuse me, nicely linted. Then after that, I was going to um, merge the changes into this PR and hopefully merge this PR. All right, cool. Also, CodeCup as a service is really nice and convenient and I appreciate them making things for free, but also um, they got some bugs. Um, the way that I compute test coverage in this template, or rather the way that the template computes test coverage is there are three test scripts. There is the unit test one, just your standard PMPM run test. So it runs vtest and then uploads code coverage. Then there's also the setup and the hydration script, pair scripts, hydrate.yaml, where these run the end-to-end -end tests that run those commands and then also upload code coverage there. Um, but CodeCov will, will put the PR comment up when the first of these three finishes with, even though it's smart enough to merge their coverage together. So you temporarily get these horrifying things like decreased coverage by 45% because it's only factoring in one of these things, three soon to be merged coverage indicators. I actually think this might be a bug in the template in um, a different repo that I am that I maintain, TS API Utils, um, Rebecca Stevens, an excellent um, person, co-maintainer, uh, had set up the test workflow to use a feature called flags from um, CodeCov. So I'm wondering, I feel like I should actually just use that feature here where, oh, oh excuse me, the old backstretch. <laughs> where like in, in TS API utils pull requests, if you just go to a example one, let's see. CodeCov reports flag coverage for these um, same like flags. So yeah, I think uh, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm thinking I'm gonna. Oh, good stretch. Got the. I'm supposed to be doing this weird looking thing a lot because I have a habit of like leaning forward and I'm supposed to. Oh, like it hurts right there. I have to do the yoga. Pilates shenanigans after this. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to file a new issue on tooling and, and take it on myself. Tooling use code cov flags. Example courtesy of Rebecca Stevens of uh, using this in another photo. Uh, how do I phrase this? Uh, this code. Oh, So yeah, they edited it. Uh, here we go. This repo um, has three GitHub workflows that run some kind of test with vtests dash dash coverage and upload the coverage report. The seal memes. Oh my God, you're totally right. For those who are, <laughs> this is literally the stretch. That I that my physical therapist told me to do. Also, arms up and back. Oh, big stretch. Also, drink water. Yeah. Uh, what to code cub? But code cub has this fun quirk where when 
as soon where as soon as the first of the coverage uploads is done, it updates the PR uh, PR comment, which me, which means temporarily they say very scary numbers like. Um, let me get that uh, comment here. Oh, and squash and merge. Yay. I see in that the code cub upload action can take in a flags option to indicate what indicate explicit sections of report seems like that should tell code how to wait to update until all usual flags are in at the very least it's useful what is my physical therapist for back problems woo oh you did you did arm focus sports you did sports i'm jealous my older brother got to do little league but my parents were a little older and by the time I came around five years later, later, they did not have the energy to put me in Little League or other sports. So now I have very poor physical uh, stature and, and, and habits. But yeah, um, for a while, it was my lower back I had issues, which actually caused serious leg pain and a limp. Which, fun fact, I had a mild limp in high school, and I was also really into House MD, the show. Um, so I, <laughs> I was wondering then, like, is this like some sort of weird psychosomatic thing? Am I imitating Greg House, you glory? No, no, it's that I had looked back issues. Um, and then when I went to PT, fixed those, I ended up like doing more work, like laying down on the bed or with my standing desk. And now I develop upper back issues. So, <laughs> back issues. Oh, I've been meaning to try out the bouncy ball thing. Uh... <laughs> Elephant. I love the, the mind games children play like that. To know where the coverage is coming from. So yeah, let me just... Uh... Yeah, so now that the dot files... Been meaning to try out... By the way, Tyler, if you could post a link to the bouncy ball you're using, that'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> just because I'm a programmer doesn't mean I don't have aches and pains. Ah. Yeah. Oh yeah, joint pain in the fingers. I got one of these fancy schmancy ergo mice. Cannot recommend it enough. Early stage carpal tunnel is scary. Uh, oh, it's a German bouncy ball. Well, in that case, gonna have to find my Philadelphian equivalent. Uh, what's, ooh, a technical question. What's the difference between yarn frozen lock file and yarn pure lock file? Nope, <laughs> I don't know the difference. I'm curious though. So uh, if you if you know if you find out let let me know. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna quickly do this uh, lock files flags thing. So code cov action at three uh, with flags unit tests and flag. Oops. I have a with flags setup tests and flags humor is the whiskey of life uh hydration hydrate tests can I call this like just a unit tests can I just give it a name like code cov action I should like actually Oh, they recommend calling it like integration or unit. Okay, that's fine. Set up hydrate. Check out the code of flag. Uh, fail if update really means normally it's um it's whether there's an exit code one so like it'll fail your CI. So yeah, you could try that out. Like see see what the exit code is from running yarn. How do you see what the, what is it? Like, 
echo hi. Uh, echo, what is it? The last command? Yeah. Um, so like echo dollar question mark will show the status code from the last command, I think. Uh, cat pack JSON grab ASDK CPA. Echo question mark shows a one. Yeah, it failed. Oh, love a Moscato. Anyway, uh, add all, get commit and feet, add code cov action flags. Push the origin code cov flags. Let me, uh, I should uh, post the link here in the, in the issue too. And I'll post while the PR is building, I'll also quick little side interlude on code cov flags for multiple test ports being merged. Hmm. All right. Let's actually fill out this PR template. Boop, 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 boop. 544. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even mark this as accepting PRs. Feature. Yeah. Adds flags to each of the three test workflows. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I used to be a big cocktail guy. But then I started drinking to the point of it being unhealthy, which is, by the way, a very low bar. That stuff is real bad for you. So, uh, yeah, like a couple of cocktails a night, I was like gaining weight. So now I'm like, I, I'm a coffee person, but I'm not like one of those coffee people that's like super into it, you know, uh, like measuring the pressure and oh, my beans are single source Guatemala or whatever. I just, I just like making lattes with, with the fun little syrups. I hope to never get to the point where I don't enjoy just like diner coffee. Yeah. <sighs> oh yeah, I've been addicted to caffeine. It sucks. Being addicted to caffeine sucks. Oh, tea is good. Yeah, so fun fact, there's like this new process for uh, decaf coffee grounds while this PR is building and we can wait. I hope CodeCalf posts soon. Decaf, new decaf coffee process. It's like better. Um, so there's like an old way of making decaf coffee, which like messes up the beans. And then there's a new way. And oh, come on. Why? Why is there no CodeCalf comment? What is happening? What? How did I break code cove? What is, what is this? Code cove? <sighs> In the meantime, so it uploaded successfully. Oop, let me post the PR here. Oh, boba tea is amazing. You can make it at home, actually. I used to make boba tea cocktails, which was so good. Uh, and it's like three line may or may not have broken code cloud uploading. I jinxed it by saying this was a quick little, and now it's like a whole thing. Code cloud, why are you doing this to me? Why is it infinite loading? Because the head commit is not found. What? What are you talking about? Oh. Well, I'll just skip this for now. Oh, interesting. Maybe it's because the head commit is one that didn't run in CI. Well, anyway, I'm going to skip this and go back to uh, <laughs> the thing I actually wanted to get back to, which was PR258. Diverge main. 
so now that we now that we have this this PR here, let's let's look at the changes. So I merged main into it. So ES under C, uh, we extend plugin and recommend it as well. Uh, it's got some GitHub actions, but those are uh, failures, complaints, but those should go, go away now that Lint is rerunning. Um, and then, yeah, the, here we go. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, Lint RC, the only changes are adding the plugin and adding n slash no missing imports. Um, is that sorted? I want to do one. And Lint. So I guess uh, this, the natural sorting makes, uh, makes one of these go first. Does it care? Oh, it doesn't care because it's in the Yeager area. Whatever, it's fine. I don't really mind either way. Um, package JSON, ESL plugin N, and then a couple of things. Okay, awesome. This is great. Thanks so much. Very, very excited to finally have node specific rules. In here. Very, very excited. Okay. Yay. Oh, love matcha lattes. I wish matcha could be decaf. Like that's one of my great sadnesses in life. Um, I love matcha so much. And then it's like high caffeine. All right. So now that uh, this, is, this is here, I'm going <sighs> to... Oh, you know what? The hydrate script. Ah. Ah, I almost forgot. Um, oh, I almost forgot. Changes need to be applied to, I forgot root files TS. Path. Copy remote file URL, that's what I was looking for. Uh, uh, and yeah, this is an annoyance that, uh, so the, uh, the end to end hydrate tests shouldn't, um, allow or so many shouldn't ex ignore so many file changes. So. How do I phrase this? Copy as file URL. Right now, the end to end hydrate test allows quite a few files to be changed. Um, it, it's reasonable that they're allowed to be changed. E.g. all contributors RC. Those files, like many or all of those files, clearly should should be changed. E.g. all contributors RC gets updated with new contributors. Ah, so still verify changes to expect to change two files are correct yeah but the script just totally ignores those files instead of asserting on their instead of asserting their contents are what's expected which means it's easy to make changes to the repos files that aren't reflected in versions of in the hydration templating templates program. For example, changes to ESMRC.cjs, such as number 50, 528, still pass even though root files ts just rc.cjs isn't updated 
can we figure out a way to still verify that the changes to those files are what we expect them to be? Clean up or area really testing. Testing. I wonder if I should add a new issue form for that. Anyway, testing. Uh, feature accepting pull requests. Yeah. Then hydration is described here. I always like to put a little link to the package readme. Um, hy hydration. Repository hydration. There it is. Copy as new file URL. I forgot to check boxes. Okie dokie. Filed. I'll go ahead and make this change because I really don't want to keep rudely blocking you. Ah, there we go. End to end hydrate. <laughs> but I'm sh got him. All right, GPR checkout 528. Root file TS. It's linked to comments. Recommend. You know, while I'm here, I might as well sort things. So, boop. And then, and no missing. I'll put that on top of no only test. Why not? No only tests. Yes. Oh, did you pass that a while ago? Sorry. <laughs> Hydration to it had all push. Ugh, what did I do? I always do a colon instead of a semicolon. Ugh. Irksome. There we go. Oh yeah, I just realized it's my time, 12.09. So uh, I'm probably gonna go for another 20 minutes, go to 12.30, just uh, just to get through notifications. I got a lot of stuff going on and I'm, I'm pleased with it. So yep, change package, package JSON, change the actual ESLint file, change the template for the ESLint file. A couple of resolve conversations. Calfee Stev, I'm so glad you liked it. React Man was a great conference. Shout out to the organizers, Yaz, Rebecca, Michelle, and so on. Really, really great time. I got to meet a lot of really cool people. Um, like I met the dude, Christopher Shadow, who made Prettier. That was like my like, whoo, moment. Also, he was a really nice guy. <laughs> yeah, when I was on Windows, I used to have to always do the and end. Life is hard. Uh, cool. So this should resolve that conversation. Increase coverage by 7%. That seems wrong. Um, all right, this should. Should be good to go soon. Also, um, I got that other PR. So once this merges into me, I'll try to. Oh wait, code cover is here. There we go. It just took a little while. Silly goose. What took you? What took you so long. That's not what I wanted to do. Show all checks. There we go. Code cover plus seven percent. Why does it say seven percent? Whatever. Anyway, merge. Lol. Oh boy, it's, did, did someone raid? Oh, thanks for the raid, much, much appreciated. Thanks, oh my God. Y'all, I said Dax, I meant Dax. Pardon me, but hey everyone, welcome. I can't, I can't look at you, but uh, I guess I can do this. Hello, shout out. Uh, shout out, DHDXR. 
Thanks for thanks for coming coming over. I'm sorry I was ignoring <laughs> you. I get these like little hyper focus moments and then uh your little cartoon face. Uh yeah, I was just staring at you off to the side in, in awe and, and happiness. Is that the guy who's always yelling at everyone on Twitter? I like to think that I'm um what's a nicer version of yelling? Not scolding. Chastising? There we go. Anyway, really appreciate y'all hanging out. Thanks. Um, I'll, I'll do a quick little intro for me and then I'll continue my work because apparently that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm a full-time independent open source maintainer. Hi, everyone. I'm Josh. I don't work for any specific company. I work on shared open source tools in the TypeScript ecosystem. Uh, I chastise with a smile. Uh, no, so Dax and I met was it React Miami where we met? Um, and yeah, I do conference speaking and I also wrote a book. Uh, cool, yeah. What have you been up to? What were you uh, streaming on before this? You and your 70 people who've rated me. Oh, my phone's ringing. Uh, so right now, uh, while you type out your answer, I'm working on a fun little package. You were recording a podcast episode with Adam. Oh no, what? Was he saying terrible things like using a uh, linter to format your code? Nutlope, wait. Wait, I know you. I saw, oh, ah, hi. Um, yeah, I stream. I, I don't do a good job of promoting myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, hi. I stream, I, I upload all these things to YouTube afterwards if y'all are interested. Um, also, I was about to say earlier, I wrote a book uh, learning TypeScript. LT? Are my stream elements not working? Oh, thanks for the subscription. I, I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so I always get distracted when like a few dozen people join. But yeah, I'm just going through my GitHub notifications. This this template repo that I'm working on, I'd honestly recommend it for anyone who wants to uh, get started with a new TypeScript repo. Um, it's got a whole bunch of really good tooling built in. Oh, the release job is failing. That's not good. Creating T log error. What? What? Whatever. Um, so yeah, it's got like linting and unit tests and all sorts of great stuff built in. Uh, thanks everyone for who just joined and followed and even subscribed, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going through my GitHub notifications, which is always a lot of them. Bump, boop, boop, boop. Was this the one I mentioned in the talk? I think so. I think I mentioned a, um, a template repo in the talk. But yeah, uh, let's see here. So I'm actually going to work now on a couple of TypeScript ESLint things. So I don't know what my book command, but didn't work. But anyway, learning typescripts.com if y'all want to buy my book. But anyway, in the meantime, uh, TypeScript ESLint.io is the tooling, one of the tooling that uh, pieces that I work on. It's the tooling that lets you run uh, common TypeScript area, sorry, common JavaScript area things on your TypeScript code. Uh, for example, this is what enables ESLint and Prettier to support TypeScript. And I'm one of the maintainers for this tool. And we're actually really close to releasing a big new V6 um, thing. I'll just post the beta link here. And I'm really excited about this. We're so freaking close. We've been so close for months. It's just a lot of us have been like traveling or having children or whatever. So there are a couple of changes that I wanted to get in before we release V6 as stable. One of them is, fun fact, there is a restrict plus operands rule um, that make sure that you're using the plus operator the right way. You're not like accidentally joining things incorrectly. And uh, I got this little PR here that updates that rule to add a bunch of allow options. So like allow Boolean, allow nullish, allow regular expression. And by the way, for those who don't follow me, I'm Josh Ricky Goldberg on basically everything. And I, whenever I stream, I always post a nice big thread of all this stuff I do. So switching, gears again now on to tcs slint prs seeing updates made to mine 
Anyway, any, any of y'all in the chat use TypeScript BS Lens? Y'all lent your, you lent your TypeScript code? Do you format your TypeScript code? What's your relationship with your linter? How do you like us? So, uh, Brad had reviewed, oh, of course, hell yeah. Brad reviewed changes to this PR and looks like, okay, great. So yeah, we, this PR adds in some new options to the restrict plus operands rule. But it has some pretty strong warnings that we generally recommend using these new options as they limit which varieties of incorrect plus each can be checked. Prettier for formatting types of BS for everything else. Let's go! Hell yeah. All right. So yeah, I definitely recommend y'all check out this uh, pull request. I linked it in the chat, 6161. Um, adding a bunch of new options to the restrict plus operands rule. This will be available in TypeScript ESLint, the, the version we release next week on Monday. So, squash and merge. Yay. Um, thanks, Brad. Why can't I react to this post? Oh. What? Is it locked or really? Hmm. You can't emoji react to PR reviews. That's weird. It's still too much setup. Uh, yeah. So actually that's one of the big things that I'm trying to work on, uh, making it easier to configure types of BS lint. Uh, let's see. All right. So another PR review, one that might be a little more, uh, this one actually has more than just a green merge button. A little more discussion on this one, maybe. Boop, boop, boop. So let's change check compound assignments to skip compound assignments. <laughs> I love it when I get errors. Until you get errors, yeah. One of the big issues with linters and type checkers and stuff is that people want them to catch bugs, but people also really hate being told their code is wrong. It's this conflicting psychological thing. Uh, Yeah, so one of my big shticks in life is that I really, I don't like um, truthy by default options. Um, for example, the rule right now has this check compound assignments. Um, yeah, ESLint's a great way to yell at people without being blamed for it. Uh, this check compound assignments option um, which is by default true. And you can turn it off if you want. Um, but I find that confusing that the default value for it is false. Um, but we want, I don't know, it's just, it's weird to me. Like we want to change the default to true in the next major version because it's a good check to have. Um, but when you have a default version that's true, so like I'll just go to the v6 docs and post them here. Here we go. Check compound assignments. Uh, oh, it's it's off by default. Yeah, so we wouldn't want to turn it to true by default because then like, I don't know, truth by default, it's just a, like a logical confusion. Like by default, the value is true, but then if you specify it, it, it can be true or false. I don't know. So I... I suggested we, we rename it to skip compound assignments. Now there is issue with that in that it's a breaking change, like the, the rule value is now renamed and that might be disruptive to people. But I, I think it's an objectively better thing to have um, things that are, that when you they're not specified, they default to a falsy value like undefined or or, or false, so. I don't know. Does anyone here care? <laughs> like separately from ESLint configs, like if you have a function in code, let's say um, type your function, function, do log message, string, uh, exclaim equals true. Like I find this to be confusing. Exclaim. If exclaim. Whatever, it doesn't really matter what the logic is. Like, I just find it rather confusing personally that 
one would one would default this to true so like do log hi exclaim is true and then do log hi true or false i don't know it's just weird to me yeah i see what you mean the i think <coughs> anyway if this were like a super commonly used thing i would want to be a little more cautious but if we if i do actually a search for um what's the what's the old name check compound assignments in source graph which by the way is a really thank you for the agreement folks appreciate you really great tool source graph if you if you look for where people do it in the wild um you can actually like i've started doing this as um like like just like a a, a fields test a, a general how are things going um and uh oh yeah it looks like a oh look at this how many how many how many matches are we getting here you know i'm gonna change it to extension js or lang javascript see how many matches we have for people's config files so out of the result limit hit increase limit yeah out of the whatever thousands upon thousands of config files in the wild wow there are actually over a thousand usage of this this is kind of cool so 28 in one repo what are they doing <laughs> oh i want to exclude paths that include uh node modules minus dot star node modules dot star how do i exclude a path minus file minus path yeah, file node modules dot star Does this work? How do you ex? Ah, dang it! How do you exclude something from uh, node modules? So, oh, does source graph have a Cody thing? They have this like fancy schmancy AI here. All right, Let's see how this works. God dang it! Wasn't there? A I could have sworn they had a, a Cody AI. How do I exclude file paths that include? node node modules in a source graph query i'm asking cody is that right i don't know that that's right let's try it out nope <laughs> allison are you a poet uh, uh, I don't know that that's right. It caused no results. What is it? repo file node modules? Maybe I have to quote it. Come on, Cody. What? bang file still no what come on cody <laughs> oh my god i am trying wait allison is that is that a source graph thing are you a source graph wizard Oh, no, it auto-formatted. Nope. To find all instances of the string check compound assignments in JavaScript files, excluding files whose path includes node modules. Oh, does teach work source graph? Ah. What? 
it that simple? Oh, is it? Come on. No results, LOL. Oh, GPT-4. Oh my god, I'm gonna share this this clip with the uh, the source graph people. This is really funny. Honestly, Cody is normally really good. Uh, anyway, um, source graph exclude node modules from search. Directory exclude. Let's see, can I do like minus file node modules? Does that work? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's just minus file node modules. This is really funny. Figure it out. I do love how Cody apologizes so profusely. A lot of these language models do. I'm so sorry. I sincerely appreciate Good for you, Cody. Be polite. All right, yeah, so uh, 58 results. What? There's like so many more before. Yeah, all right, well, yeah. Uh, so final query, yeah, just exclude files and then specify the folder. Oh, that's another option. All right, yeah, so, uh, I think the fact that we're turning on the behavior by default in the new config makes me feel better about it. Also, not that many folks enable the option. Current result count 58. Cool, so let's merge. Yay. Awesome, with this merge, I believe I am now rule config complete for TypeScript ESLint v6, which in, by which I mean all the, sorry, the config complete, all the changes to the configs that I wanted to do are done. Um, so fun fact, our milestone is 87% uh, complete. There are a few cases where um, there are some like other changes we want to do. Um, let's see. Well, so this I don't think needs to be in the milestone. Uh, I'm gonna clear out. This is like a adding a feature support thingy. So what are we now? 88% complete, yay. Um, so this makes me happy. So what I'm gonna do now is um, Apply changes to config presets for v6. Yeah, I'm gonna stop for today because I'm doing, I'm, I've done a lot and I'm tired. Uh, but there, one last thing I would recommend to folks is um, I'd highly recommend trying out TypeScript ESLint v6 on your own. Um, you can find the steps to do that. I'll just post this again on our blog post. We've got a bunch of really nice new uh, reworked configurations. So like um, if you if you wanna enable all of our recommended type check rules and the stylistic ones, which we have split out of the defaults recommended config. So the stylistic ones are on their own. Uh, you can do that. Uh, and then we've got this whole big list of them documented nicely. Stylistic, stylistic type check and so on. Um, additionally, if you want, so you can, you can just install on NPM like the at RCV6 that should, should be updated. If you want to be even fancier, you can clone our repo locally, go through the normal local development flow, uh, contributing. And then I also have a, um, local linking guide PR and review that explains how to, uh, use our modern repos packages locally if you want to develop them. So um, that's all for today. I'm going to close out with some stream commands. Also, what is this? I thought I had uh, like a, a book command. 
So um, I'm the author of, there it is, Learning TypeScript. Uh, I call it number one. It's an arbitrary measurement. Um, I'm also uh, on GitHub sponsors and type 2 PS is on Open Collective. Neither of us are supported by one specific company. We're community funded. So please, please help us continue to do good work. I, I really want to. Um, you can find me on the internet in all sorts of different places, Blue Sky, Twitter, Fostodon, and so on. Um, and yeah, let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover on stream. I know CBID too, you, you sent a PRL. It's on my queue, I'll take a look later. Um, and if there's anything I can do to help you in your TypeScript linting journey. Uh, lastly, because I have a couple dozen people more than I normally do, I'm going to run a quick one minute ad. Uh, and then after that ad, I'm going to raise someone. So I won't be offended if you leave now. But this has been an absolute pleasure. So thanks, y'all. Bye. Oh no, the website tests are failing. That's not good. Also, I don't know if anyone can hear and see me while I play an ad break. If you can hear and, and or see me, let me know in the chat because I still barely know how Twitch works for uh, streamers like me. So <laughs> hit me up. I take the lack of responses to mean that I am, I am alone. I'm also curious if this will show up in the recording that I upload to YouTube later. Hmm. One wonders. Ten seconds left in the ad. You can hear me. Ah, nice. That's funny. Anyway, completed the ad break. Uh, oh, but I'm just looking through channels to raise. Mateo is 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 doing things. That's awesome. Mateo's a really cool individual, conference speaker, no technical steering committee, I want to say. Does a lot of really cool work in general, so we're going to raid. Again, bye everyone, thanks!